Hey everyone, it's Tyler, the Antenna Man. One of the promising features of the new ATSC 3.0 over-the-air TV standard is better reception, exciting many people who use indoor antennas or live in weak signal areas. However, this new TV standard gives broadcasters the ability to reduce their signal in favor of more bandwidth for data casting, and some TV stations are already doing it. For those of you unfamiliar with the technical terms, ATSC 1.0 is the current over-the-air TV standard that most TV stations in the United States use to broadcast their channel free over the air. If you use an antenna to pick up local channels like ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox, you are likely accessing an ATSC 1.0 signal. ATSC 3.0, also known as Next Gen TV, is the next generation over-the-air TV standard that broadcasters want to replace ATSC 1.0 as soon as 2028, but it'll probably take a bit longer as I mentioned in a previous video you can find linked in the description. Now it is true that ATSC 3.0 technically provides better reception through a more robust modulation compared to the very fragile one used on the current ATSC 1.0 TV standard. However, with ATSC 3.0, TV stations have different configuration options on the broadcasting side to make the signal worse if they choose, and some will. Right now, on the current ATSC 1.0 TV standard, the bandwidth and signal strength required is set and cannot be modified. It includes a 19 megabit per second data stream for video channels that requires a 15 dB signal to noise ratio from an antenna to the code. For those of you who also don't understand these technical terms, say that on ATSC 1.0, a given TV station can carry seven channels, but it requires a 40% signal from the antenna for your TV to decode it. With ATSC 3.0, TV stations have different configuration options known as physical layer protocols or PLPs. There's an inverse relationship between how much bandwidth a TV station has access to and how robust a signal is. TV stations have the freedom to increase their broadcast signal at the cost of less bandwidth for channels, but they can also reduce their signal in exchange for more bandwidth, particularly for data casting, which is already starting to happen. This is the point in the video where I'm going to reference several slides from a presentation made by Steven Rossiter of Gatesair at the NAB show back in 2017. You can find a link to the whole presentation in the description of the video. Definitely check it out because it's got a lot of cool information. This slide represents the broadcast coverage of a TV station using ATSC 1.0. You can see that covers about 41.7% of the map. If TV stations decide to replicate the 19 megabit per second stream they get on ATSC 1.0, using what's known as a 64 qualm PLP on ATSC 3.0, the signal can now be decoded with as little as an 11.5 dB SNR, providing better coverage to weak signal areas. TV stations can go even further with the 16 qualm PLP that only requires a 7.32 dB SNR to decode, which expands coverage of the broadcast signal to 53.7% on the map compared to 41.7% using ATSC 1.0, roughly a 28% increase in coverage. However, the trade-off is there's now less bandwidth to carry channels, 13 megabits compared to 19 megabits on ATSC 1.0. There's also the QPSK PLP that only requires a measly 1.9 signal to noise ratio to the code, expanding coverage to 60% of the map, which is nearly a 50% increase in coverage compared to ATSC 1.0, although bandwidth is now reduced to 6.5 megabits about one third the channel capacity on ATSC 1.0, so don't expect this PLP to be used often down the road. Despite the bandwidth limitations, some of you may think, wow, ATSC 3.0 is great. TV stations can expand coverage of their broadcast signal to improve antenna reception and reach more areas. No more channels going in and out. That's not exactly the case. While TV stations do have the ability to use more robust PLPs on ATSC 3.0 to expand broadcast coverage, they can also use less robust PLPs to reduce coverage in favor of more bandwidth. Once again, here's a slide that represents a broadcast signal using the current ATSC 1.0 TV standard. 
Note the 15 dB SNR required to the code and 19 megabit per second bandwidth for channels. Using the 1024 QAM PLP on ATSC 3.0, TV stations can increase their bandwidth, aka channel capacity, to about 32 megabits per second, but now the antenna needs an SNR of about 19 dB to the code, leading to a loss of service for people in fringe areas of the market. But wait, there's more! TV stations can nearly double their channel capacity using the 4096 QAM PLP, which some may use to broadcast 4K, but now your antenna needs an SNR of about 23 dB to the code. This is a serious reduction in broadcast coverage compared to the existing TV standard, down to 34.7% on the coverage map compared to 41.7% from the ATSC 1.0 signal, which translates to a loss of service in 20% of the market. To be clear, there's no current FCC requirement for a TV station to use a more robust PLP that improves broadcast coverage from ATSC 1.0. They have the freedom to use a less robust PLP in favor of more bandwidth, specifically more bandwidth for data casting. Those of you asking for 4K over the air, be careful what you wish for, because it may come at the cost of a reduced broadcast signal you may no longer be able to access. Do you trust multi-billion dollar broadcast companies to do the right thing? I don't. Beyond locking people out of accessing their local channels with DRM encryption, Broadcast companies have made it clear that data casting is a priority moneymaker with this new over-the-air TV standard. Assuming that the FCC will eventually mandate a transition to ATSC 3.0, there needs to be consumer protections against broadcasters using less robust PLPs in favor of data casting as it reduces the broadcast signal and will lead to a loss of service for thousands of antenna users in each market, possibly you. I'll keep everyone posted on what needs to be done to protect free over the air moving forward, but I figured to make this video in the meantime to clarify some facts about the next generation over the air TV standard broadcasters want to transition to. I see a lot of people clamoring about how ATSC 3.0 is great because it guarantees better reception for everyone, which isn't necessarily the case as I showed in this video. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this YouTube video, and an additional thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon or as a member of my YouTube channel. If my videos helped you cut the cord or if you just think they're cool and would like to help support them along with the advocacy I provide for free over the air TV, visit patreon.com forward slash antenna man, click the join button in this video, and you can also click the thanks button. If you're on Facebook, you can like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antenna man PA or sign up to my email list linked in the description below. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more cord cutting and time related videos and have an awesome day.